For another year here in Indianapolis, lawmakers are debating whether to make pseudoephedrine a prescription only drug. And while it has bipartisan support, those who oppose it aren't doing so on party lines. We find out it's all about geography. Representative Bacon says he does not know whether or not it will make it out of committee this legislative session. We'll keep our eyes on it. Reporting from the state capitol in Indianapolis, David Shepard, Eyewitness News. Mississippi is only one of two states in the nation making pseudoephedrine a prescription only drug. And police say it's working wonders, dropping meth labs in the state by nearly 70%. But can it work in Indiana and Kentucky? We traveled here to Jackson, Mississippi to find out. Good evening from downtown Evansville on the final stop in our Voice of the Voter tour. For weeks, we've been crisscrossing the tri state, hearing from people just like you the issues that are important to you this election day. But we've also been hearing from a lot of people about their hopes and their dreams for the future. Tonight, we hear from them on our final stop of our Voice of the Voter tour. Senior White House advisor David Axelrod says the economy is improving. The White House expecting third quarter growth this year. The man left, but later came back with a duffel bag he claimed had a bomb in it. The hospital reopened and is operating normally at this hour. Police continue their search for a suspect. Now, residents say they had no warning, but officials say if another tornado hits, they'll be ready. The events that got underway at 5 o'clock here at Sullivan County Park and Lake. They'll be going all the way through 4th of July. Tonight at 8, the Blue River Band's going to take the stage, so come on by. Get your weekend started off early. It's tragic. Words from State Representative Gail Reekin on the recent death of an Indianapolis child in a meth lab explosion. The mother was cooking uh, meth. There was an explosion. She jumped out of the window and her seven-year-old child stood at the window and didn't get out. It has become a cancer in our area, in the Evansville area, and also throughout the state and other areas. Republican Representative Ron Bacon is, for another year, pushing fellow lawmakers in Indianapolis to support a law making pseudoephedrine a prescription-only drug, following states like Mississippi and Oregon. Pseudoephedrine is the key ingredient used in making meth. We're trying to address the issues of people saying, well, I don't want to not be able to get my pseudoephedrine when I need it, so we've put in uh, the ability to buy 28.8 grams, as you can buy it now, still behind the counter, uh, that, but those, that 28.8 grams will give you four months of uh, pseudoephedrine for your seasonal allergies. If you really need more than that, you need to be under a doctor's care. Rekin, a Democrat, supports the idea. We're seeing where maybe people are waking up a little bit more um, to the effects. Uh, the effects on children um, are, are horrible regarding meth. Uh, not only a situation like that, but to be raised in an environment like that. In fact, the measure has bipartisan support in both the state house and senate. Opposition isn't coming along party lines. It's in different areas. We have a huge problem in our southwestern Indiana. The Terre Haute area has a problem up in Cascasio County, uh, in um, up north of Fort Wayne, they have a problem. That's why we're having pushback in, in the state house because other legislators, there's 150 of them, and uh, they don't have a problem, so they don't want to put restrictions on their constituents. And I totally understand that. One of the lawmakers opposed to the prescription-only law is State Senator Jim Toms. I've even had it said to me in discussions about this, well, sometimes good people have to pay the price as well. And I, I don't understand that concept. The idea that, well, you're just going to have to pay an extra 60 to a, over $100 to go to a doctor and get a piece of paper and then go to your pharmacist and get your medication. I don't, uh, I don't want to do that. Representative Bacon says he does not know whether or not it will make it out of committee this legislative session. We'll keep our eyes on it. Reporting from the state capitol in Indianapolis, David Shepard, Eyewitness News. It's a crime that has sent shockwaves through the small town of Petersburg, Indiana. A couple, Stephen Quick and Samantha Light, charged with molesting young children they were hired to babysit. One of them, their own two-month-old daughter. The case, a parent's worst nightmare. I don't want to have to wake up every day thinking about what happened to him. Light pled guilty to three felony charges of child molestation. A judge Wednesday sentenced her to 125 years in prison for her crimes. One day, she's not a safe, trusting person anymore. Larissa Smith's six-year-old boy was one of the victims. Wednesday's sentencing made her reflect on the pain the case has caused. It was very painful. It was infuriating. It was infuriating. It was, it was painful, but it was very infuriating. Still angry? I'm very angry. In court, Samantha Light wept as she read a statement in her own defense. 
She says Stephen Quick threatened to kill her if she didn't molest the kids. Though she cried, Smith, Light's former best friend, says she has not shown remorse for the crime. Those were not sincere tears. Those were please have pity on me tears. In her statement, Light told the court about her history of physical and emotional abuse. Some rationale in her mind for the crime she committed. She told the court she herself was a victim, but the real victim's families aren't buying it. I'm glad that this is coming to an end. And I'm glad that she's going to be sitting in there for the rest of her life. The family members of the young victims cried through much of the hearing, listening to the judge give graphic detail about the use of sex toys on kids, sodomy, and other horrifying acts. It's hard. It's hard to hear it over and over and over again. It's not something that you want to think about every day. Samantha Light was led out of the courtroom in handcuffs, silent, to begin Samantha, serving her say? long sentence. Are you still a proud mommy, Samantha? That's your MySpace says. Samantha Light, the woman who some in this small town call a monster. A woman who's confessed to committing acts so awful we can't describe them on television. She's now headed to the Department of Corrections where she'll spend the rest of her life in prison.